order uh, Daniel Boone District Committee of the Whole for December 4th, 2017. Uh, we've already um, pledged the flag, so we'll move right into uh, roll call, please, Mr. Lucas Neal. Ms. Albright. Here. Mr. Miller. Mr. Miller. Mr. Gerzo. Here. Mr. Ozell Neal. Here. Mr. J. Scott. Here. Mr. Rathgad. Here. Mr. B. Scott. Yes, here. Ms. Olson. Here. Mr. Wolf. Here. Okay. Um, procedures for public comment. Um, prepared here. We have our, our book at the back with any uh, attachments and everybody is signed in. Uh, if you have any comments, please approach the mic. You have three minutes from when you sign in and state your name and address. Um, any comments on agenda items before we uh, get moving here? Mr. Rathke, there was one. Oh, we do have one added, added right? Yes. Yeah, so we have added 1B. Yeah, the date includes... Um, 21st, 20, 20th, 21st, and 22nd. Which item, I'm sorry? You're adding December. It's uh, 1B1A. Okay. It's adding an additional day of December 27th. Okay. You got more to do program, Mr. Rafkin. Oh, I, I, you left me, you left me a program? That's under personnel, right? Yeah, I was going to say it's not. Well, that was that one. <laughs> it's a not nine nine B. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Nine D one. Yeah. Okay. Any uh, other um, edits to the agenda by board members? Superintendent's report, please. Is James Kreiner present? Okay. Well, I have an award here for James Edward Kreiner, who's been elevated to Eagle Scout. So we will send this to him. We're done. Oh, congratulations. Um, James's project was he built a kiosk at Mino um, on uh, Monocacy Hill. So it's not here to that's all I have. Okay. Any public comment on uh, our absent Eagle Scout? All right. All right, moving on to uh, the finance. We have uh, course and credit approvals, uh, some taxes, exonerations, which are on your uh, attachments. Um, and also, I guess while we're under finance, we do have a meeting um, Thursday, 6th. Right, Mr. Small, and our, our auditor will be here. So um, our auditors will be here to go over our um, audit for uh, last year. Uh, so uh, anybody from the board is uh, more than welcome to join us for that. Um, and Mr. Small will be getting those out uh, tonight, tomorrow morning. As soon as we get them. I'm not I sure thought you had them. We don't have the final... We worked up the final details with it today. I'm okay. not sure when they're going to send them over to us. They said she'll have them to me in the morning. In the okay. morning? Okay. Yeah. If we can get those out as soon as possible to board members so they can look them over. Yes. And that way, uh, if you have any questions, that we'll Absolutely. be sitting here fumbling around trying to trying to figure it out. So. Absolutely. Okay. Um, any um, any board questions, concerns on under finance? Any public comments? All right. Presentations by board members. Um, Mr. Secretary, anything in your from your a avenue there? Nope. All right. Um, Berks County Intermediate Unit. We are um, off for uh, for December. Um, at our uh, November meeting, really wasn't um, uh, anything that, uh, frankly was a major uh, a major appointment a major importance I did mention that we um, we did um, uh, the IU amongst uh, many other things we um, we bid on um, the um, 
early learning, and I'm going to top my head here, I apologize, uh, but we actually lost a bid to a private corporation um, that uh, does um, some of the early learning support that the IU has done for the past several years. Uh, so we're transitioning some of those employees uh, into uh, other IU roles as well as we reached out to the uh, company that won the bid to see if uh, they will take on any of the employees. We're also uh, trying to um, see if they will lease uh, the space over at the IU building uh, for, their, for, the, uh, for the program. Um, so uh, we're also looking at, at the bid process and, and, and uh, potentially why the reasons and, and what for is as to why we lost the bid. And so hopefully in the future when it goes back out, we can, uh, we can get that, that business back. Uh, so the, the IU does, uh, for members who don't know, the IU does a lot of, of uh, other items to uh, garner income and, and grants and whatnot. Uh, and uh, the Berks County IU happens to be a pretty, uh, uh, pretty forward-thinking group that has quite a few contracts throughout the state. So, so we're, we're pretty proud of that. So hopefully we'll continue to get those. Um, were you at BCTC or was uh, Mr. Mara? It was Mr. Mara. Mara okay. All right, so no, no report there. Um, I don't see any student board representatives tonight. Um, Mr. Martino, would you care to make a legislation about updates since uh, since you were our last, uh, our new member hasn't had a chance to, to get there yet? Nothing's really happened. All right, well, I, I just wanted, uh, wanted to get your. Uh, I don't think he's ever spoken that few words. <laughs> All right. Um, any public comment on presentations, which were few and far between? Personnel. Um, so this is the area where we had the one edit. Uh, we have some uh, extracurriculars, some classified. Some uh, volunteers. We also have a uh, couple coaches that are uh, coming on board here. Um, pretty straightforward, unless anybody has. I know uh, the last vote we you'll see under item I. Uh, John Reyna is on the agenda again to be approved as our assistant uh, varsity baseball coach. Uh, there was a. Uh, for those that don't know, there was a. Uh, tie vote when this came up last, and uh, so Mr. Reyna was neither appointed nor uh, declined the appointment. So uh, Mr. Wolf and the board thought it best to bring it back onto the agenda when the new board was seated to see if we can't get a resolution to that. Um, and uh, perhaps uh, looking out in the audience, there might might be some some comments out there. I'm not not a hundred <laughs> percent sure, but perhaps. Um, so, uh, any questions or comments on the board about our personnel moves? I had a question. This may be for Warren, but um, are these all replacements or, or ads? Like for, as far as, like, you know, these are all the, the, the stipends that are listed here, are these all, are these folks replacing others? Yes. All of them? Yes. Um, yes. It, it says next to who they're replacing. And, and are those, and the, um, those funds, those funds are, are they itemized in, our, in the budget? Are they called out separately or are they just considered, are they bucketed part of coaching position? Yeah, or the band assistance, whatever they are. Okay. Yeah, okay. So they're just bucketed under like staffing or personnel costs for that. <coughs> or whatever that. Yes. All right. Thanks. Any other questions? Uh, any public comment on our personnel items? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Rob Kurtz. Uh, you will sign in, please, sir. I live at uh, 101 Rosewind Lane uh, in Amity here. I'm here to uh, just, I would like to encourage the board to accept uh, Mr. Reyna's. If you want to put the microphone on, this dog is supposed to be on. Is it on? It's on here. Yeah. Um, I'm here to, to, to uh, give a little bit of background on John Reyna as a coach. 
coach as a, as a person. Um, I have four children in the district, three, three sons who are in the baseball program here. Been, um, I've personally coached a lot of the young men that are in the high school now, um, back in the rec league. And we have the opportunity to do something special for this school in the baseball program. From now, back through at least the seventh, the, the, what is now the eighth grade, there's a tremendous amount of baseball talent. And uh, fine young men too, for that for that matter, in the, in the ranks here at the school. John Rainer plays a big part on that. He has coached a lot of these young men. He's a great baseball mind. Um, understands the game. It's been a tremendous help to Coach McCord. Um, I understand that there was a gentleman before that had had said that he had, there was a conflict with the team that he coached. Uh, my sons, and there's two other boys within the district that play for that organization. There's, there's very few. And I can personally assure you that John Rain is not coach in the Blue Rocks organization anymore and has not for a couple of years, and simply because he, he has a heart to coach here at Ben and didn't want to have any kind of uh, conflicts with that. So I, I, I genuinely believe that if we do not have him as a coach, that we are going to be severely impaired. The boys are going to have, you know, Coach McCord's a great coach, but he needs help, and he needs qualified help. And John Reina fits that bill, and then some. He's a as I stated, his, his son played here, and really good coach, really good guy, and I think it would be a, a tremendous disservice if John was not appointed as, as assistant coach. So, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Any other public comment on our personnel items? Okay. That, moving on. Oh, we don't, we don't want to hear from you. I know you don't want to hear from me. Kelly Hafner, uh, 107 Oxford Circle, um, Douglas Bell, microphone. Better? Okay. <laughs> Kelly Hafner, 107 Oxford Circle, Douglas Bell. Also, would like to speak to John Reyna as a coach and, and make sure that he's part of our team again. Um, we had lost John for a couple of years. He actually went to another high school. He was offered a salary there. He was not offered a salary with us. He came back to us last year. When he came back to us, he actually had several members of the team that went to him and uh, were thrilled to have him. He is an amazing baseball mind. In addition to that, both he and his wife are tremendous leaders in the community. They offer their time, they offer their service without pay, um, without asking. They volunteer, which is amazing. You all know you volunteer. To give your time is the most incredible thing that you can give. It's priceless. Um, he's a wonderful coach. I'm sorry if there are people who have had issues in the past. I'm not really sure that they are baseball people. I no longer have a son on the team. For seven years, I had one or more on the team. My baseball players have graduated. I have one senior left, and you won't have to see me anymore, hopefully. <laughs> I never really thought I'd be speaking about baseball before, uh, again. But if you let him go, honestly, you are doing a disservice to the kids. He is a leader. He is passionate from the heart. And he always has the kids' best interests at heart. So it's my plea to you, don't, don't allow him to leave food. We can lose a lot of good people. Let's not lose him. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Chen. Any other public comments? I see some people itching right there. All right. Then we'll move on to programs. Uh, your monthly headcount statistics and enrollment comparison were included with your agenda items. Any uh, questions on those? Mr. Joseph, did you have a question? Or? No. Okay. All good? Okay. Any comment, public comment on our 
monthly enrollment st statistics. Curriculum okay. and instruction to be determined, right? Uh, you said you wanted to stay on that committee. Is that what you said? No, I'm in policy. Oh. Uh, okay. Uh, so really, all our committees are to be determined right now, except for finance, uh, which again is uh, this Thursday at 6 p.m. Um, any public comment on our agenda for committee meetings? There is a transportation committee meeting tomorrow at 6 o'clock here. Ah, okay. But there was not a meeting in November, so I don't think your, your, item, your item 16, sir. I thought you were jumping ahead. No, no, all, uh, no, that's fine. You wouldn't dream of skipping over. I wouldn't dream. I wouldn't dream of that. He was so excited to tell us about <laughs> Okay, so if you if uh, your schedule is not full out there, folks, you want to come at tomorrow, <laughs> 6 p.m. for transportation, and you could come here Thursday um, for finance. So you, your week could be rounded out. We just need something for Wednesday. And you'd be good. Um, Looks like we do have some uh, items that did come from the policy review committee, though. Always busy. Um, next meeting is, I guess, will be scheduled for the 18th at 6 o'clock. Uh, here, no? We don't have a committee. We don't have a committee in can Are people going to be putting their names in? The when do they, when, next to you yeah, when do they get established? We, we have to, uh, yeah, we have to vote on that the next thing. Next we have to vote on that. So, yeah. so we can put it on the right. agenda well, and then we vote on it on the 18th January. And we're good till January. Till then. Any, any, uh, one happy well, person. Any board members have a question on our, on our, on our policies that are under review for uh, Mr. J. Scott? I have a question about um, number 915. If, if it's ready, um, the uh, Booster support organization policy. If it's ready to be voted on after reading it today, I, I think it needs to. There's several things that need to be clarified in it. Um, so this is the first reading. So okay. what'll happen is, this is everyone gets a chance to go over it. So so if yeah. the meeting in December, it will not be voted to be finalized. Is that correct? It'll be voted to. We'll pass it on to the second reading. If, well, if, if, if you no, if, if you have no if you have some questions with that, we can we can pull that off. Because uh, if it does go to the voting meeting, that would be considered a second reading at that point, correct, right, Mr. Zippers? And then, uh, so if, if there's if there's some concerns about it, we should pull it off. Uh, and I, I do have some yeah. concerns about it. And um, if that's okay, I would like to have it voted on before we vote on it. Is that okay? Committee is reconstituted. If that's okay. Yeah. We, we could do that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we'll we'll pull off uh, policy nine fifteen, the booster support organization policy for uh, for further review and. Um, Sounds you know, like somebody's very interested. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if, if, if that if that's. Uh, the policy review yeah. committee. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm sure your, years. So it really doesn't get any more exciting than that. <laughs> your, years, years of studying air quality uh, the policy. I'm sure you're well. Jay's going to give it up. I can watch paint dry with the, rest, with the best of them. <laughs> pages and pages of legal jargon that you don't understand. It's a trivial. Um, She's just st stating all our qualifications for the chairmanship. <laughs> yeah, that, that that one maybe. Uh, did, did everybody get a chance to look at? Uh, policy 229 student fundraising because that uh, sort of that not necessarily ties in but certainly goes uh, goes as part and parcel with that. Uh, yeah, just yeah, I did read that one. And, and just for I, I know Mr. McKnight enjoys the student fundraising policy. Mr. McKnight, the, the most of the policies that we go over are ones that uh, PSBA are recommending. And a lot of them are re, re upping the uh, any of the legal speak that needs to be in there, uh, any, you know, regulatory changes, et cetera. Um, and there are probably, I don't know, maybe 20% of the policies that we have are ones that we put together for ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, so, one like the uh, fundraising, we'll get usually those, anything like that that comes from PFDA is super high level and super generic. And so those are the ones where you end up, you know, wanting to 
put a little bit more into them that's specific to the district. So, you know, those are the ones you want to probably keep your eye on. Any other board uh, comments, concerns on our policies? First reading here. Any public comment? All right, we've already uh, covered transportation number 16. Uh, old business. Um, so, Mr. Subers, obviously we have a lot of new members who were not uh, present uh, were not part of the board on the 20th, so we're going to approve minutes for our voting meeting. Just so I have an idea. Do they, how, how, do you, how do you vote on something like that? Well, the, the only difficulty is you need a majority of the quorum to approve, so we need, you know, we need five votes to approve the minutes. Um, I think that um, for, if anyone's concerned about the accuracy, I mean, we're really just approving the minutes as presented by the board secretary. There's, there's, and it's, um, it's, it's necessary to finalize those minutes, um, but uh, it's not like there's any personal liability for any inaccuracy in that minute. But we will need five votes. Okay. So if you have any concerns about that before our voting meeting, uh, I'm sure Mr. Supers will can address those for you. Uh, any public comment on our minutes from November 20th? All right, new business, uh, none. I did have one question. Is there, yeah, anything from the board here? Yeah. I just had a question. So motions for voting are only going to happen in the second meeting of the month? T typically, it, not, it doesn't have to, but uh, typically we do try at the committee to hold just to have a uh, discussion meeting on, on our items that we are going to vote on, which we typically vote on the second meeting of the month. However, you know, items do come up that uh, that do need a vote. We will have a typically we'll have a separate voting meeting along with the committee of the whole uh, to tackle those. A lot of times, personnel items come up, uh, facilities, et cetera, facilities, yeah, facilities, yeah, facilities, yeah, facilities yeah. contracts, yeah. things like Mostly that. Mostly, it was personnel. personnel. You know, yeah. Could get a teacher or an aide in the class two weeks earlier, right. yeah, or as soon as possible. Yeah. Typically, I mean, to be out of order to make a motion. Yeah, I mean, uh, unless it's unless it's something pressing. Uh, I mean, typically we like to. Uh, I think everyone knows what the motion is. I don't think there's any shock coming. You, anybody can bring yeah. a motion from the floor at any time. Yeah, there's nothing holding you back. So if it's new business. <laughs> All right, uh, I make a motion that we have the superintendent move forward with the plan to reopen Birdsboro Elementary Center. Okay, so his motion, uh, I'm not sure what, what the, the plan is, but uh, there's a motion to... How about just a motion to reopen Burr's Valley Center? Makes okay. it easier. All right. Is a second? But is it, it's not closed. Well, it's we'll, we'll, have, we'll, have, we'll, have, we'll have a discussion once we get, well, once we get the second out there. Sorry. I second. Okay, so now let's have a discussion on it. So. Everyone knows my feelings. to not close Birdsboro at the end of this school year would require more work than saying let's keep it open. There are things that have been put in place over the last few years that have um, been done with the intent to remove that school. So financially um, Facility-wise, academic people have been brought on, removed to do that. We're, I mean, there's a whole plan, one boon, renaming the buildings have been submitted to the state. All the um, legal paperwork has been completed, and also our budget has been built upon that building not being a school building next year. We're also working on an agreement with the YWCA, to join the admin in that building. We're working on an agreement for River Rock to take over this whole building. So if we were to 
keep Birdsboro as a school, we would have to figure out how to reconstitute that. For example, if we were going to do one grade at a time, I think there's 56 kindergartners who live in Birdsboro right now. So we would have a class of a first grade of 56 students. We would have to hire a principal. We would have to hire a nurse and some other support staff for that. That's not been built into our budget. So if the board would like me to do that, Mr. Small and I could I mean, retool everything and we, we could do that. What I would like if we could work on an analysis and a cost factor of what it would look like to do that, unless the board said, okay, we want you to move every child who lives in Birdsboro into the Birdsboro school. That would require a huge undertaking with transportation support that we weren't going in that direction. We would also have to contact the other parties and tell them never mind. The one thing, the reason why I asked the initially the motion was to have a plan was so that we could have you work and get into the discussion because if it's not an emotion and it's not voted on, then quite frankly, you don't have to do any of that work. So my initial motion was to start the process. That's already been reopen. started. No, to reopen. No, we've already been looking at it. That's why I know how many kindergartners are in um, Monocacy for next year. We, we've already looked at that scenario. And we could have something together within a week. So we go for to, to what it would look like if we were going to reopen, not close Birdsboro. Yeah. With a school or with several different options? I know you it would be a school. Okay, but you, if I follow the train here... You're looking at putting the admin there. Well, not if it's a school. You're looking at putting the YWCA there. Right, but not if it was a school. If you didn't want me to close the school, then it would have to be reconstituted as a K through five, K through eight, whatever type of school. Right. So admin would, would need to be made to direct you in that. No, we, we've already. You you threw out, and I'm not trying to be argumentative, but just when you explained my motion, <coughs> when Mr. Wolf asked if you, how it would work, and did you have plans for the building, you threw out potentially a YWCA, you threw out potentially moving the admin offices, you threw out keeping an at-risk kindergarten. Not once no. in those options did you tell me that birth row as an elementary school was an option. So which one is it? Is it... The plan... Because yep. I know I've been contacted to meet with Mr. Casey about how the school district is going to go about reconfiguring a portion of that building for the admin because I had to reach out to the borough. Now that meeting did get canceled. So there's a lot of discussions, and that's why I don't understand. You mentioned a few different things. So which one is it? What, is, what the plan is for Birdsboro is to move the administrative offices there. And hopefully, if everything works out, and since I just said it publicly, which is still negotiating, the YWCA joining us there. That's the plan. Because it was a three-year um, scale back, one grade per year. And this is, will be the last year that there will be students in that building. They've been transitioned out over the last two, three years. Yeah, I'm not quite sure that... So that current plan is working well based on some of the things that we've seen. That's why I want to have a conversation and see a plan in place to move students back because I'm not quite sure the current format of the way things are is working. I kind of, what part of that is not working? I mean, I, first of all, I don't know that we start getting our staff here to our administration to start building a plan to reverse a plan that's already been voted on. So, you know, in all due respect, I we, guess all, we, we, all, we all knew you were going to bring this up. So, before we start deciding how we're, how long it's going to take and how much it's going to cost, I think we need to understand that is there, do we have five members that want to undo what we already did? 
guess that's all we got. The vote, the motion. I guess we'll find out in a couple minutes. We might not. I don't know. So I uh, can get shot down. I just don't want to start directing people to start putting plans together for something that. Right. I mean, I, I understand. That's why may I or may not happen. And I think you should have a full board. Yes. A full board here. Unfortunately, Mr. Miller wasn't able to attend tonight. That would give uh, the administration two weeks to come up with uh, the cost, the educational justification for undoing what we did for the justification of improving the education of the students in the first place. And, and not only the cost, but the, you know, the how long is it going to take? And to re, to do all the the, the the changes that need to be made to the building, and then also, um, what are the, how much how much could we even raise taxes high enough to cover the cost of that legally? I'm guessing that the answer is no, but we'll find out. I mean that's that's got to be part of the conversation, not just the itemized list of expenses. But well, we can't raise taxes enough to cover the projected costs. As things are, so well, that's what I'm saying. Cover that cost. That's got to be part of the conversation. And just let me be clear: this would be a board-directed requirement of the administration. The administration presented the plan to remove Birdsboro from our school inventory. If the vote goes in the direction to reopen Birdsboro, that is a board directive, not administrative. So there, we do not have a academic. Um, reason to reopen Birdsboro. The reason we did what we did was academic and financial. So if the board requests that we reverse that, then we will have a detriment to our finances and we believe academically that's what we were trying to correct with the closure of that school. Well, there, there's so, I mean, there is a motion on, on the table to uh, re reopen. Is that what the technical motion was? I motion to table um, well, I mean, I, sufficient information to which to vote. Other than well, at least um, you know. So, I mean, I, I think the administration should have a direction from the board as to what the board wants, right? Yeah. Right. Um, you know, I know we did, Mr. Norris not here. Um, Can I amend my motion then? Make it easy. Well, I think we need to. Well, we need to. Here we need a second on the motion to table in order for that to move forward. No second on the motion to take all that will die. And then you still have your main motion on the floor. Um, so I don't know if there's a second to the motion to table. If there is a second to the motion to table, that will be voted on without further discussion. Second. Okay, so we have a motion and a second to table the current motion to reopen Burrsboro. Uh, have a roll call vote, Mr. Okusner. Just to be clear, just you're tabling, you're voting to tabling table. the motion. You're not voting it yes or no on the motion, any motion. You're just tabling the motion. So we have more, we have more information, and we have all of our members here to discuss. Okay, is everyone clear on the motion? No, I <laughs> I don't have a written down, so I can't read it up to you. Motion is table. If we say, if we say no, what are, what are we saying no to? Are we saying no to table? You say yes. 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 We're and voting on the motion to table, table. Which, yes. is, yes. Which, yes. which defers action on the, on the main yes. motion. The main motion is to reopen today. Yeah, but we, but does, we would revisit That doesn't mean that, that you can't. It can be. Yeah. Mr. Durso, Just for tonight, the motion, motion is taken. Can make this motion at every meeting from now until he steps out. I, I'm good in that now. So yeah. I'm just saying that, I know, that you can, right? I'm, or any of us can. It doesn't have to be Mr. Durso. You, so the you, point you, is, you, just because we put it down, you do you realize that there's going to be more decisions to be made uh, in the next four years besides I'm, I'm full well aware besides that. Yeah, whether or not we open birds, bro? Is anyone shocked right now? No. No. I, I'm fully aware there's a lot. But more you do realize, right? Like. I, I believe I do realize okay. that. Yeah. All right. So, realize so that. We're, all, we're all good? Yeah. Mr. Augustino? <laughs> Mr. Durso? No. Mr. Oksomiu? Yes. Mr. Scott J? Yes. Mr. Rathbiad? Yes. Mr. Scott? Mr. B. Scott? I'm going to say no. Uh, Ms. Olson? No. Ms. Albright? No. Mr. Wolf? Yes. 
Uh, motion fails 4-4. Four, four. Okay, so back to... Uh, Can I amend one? one? Maybe more immediate? Yes. Everybody. You could. You could offer uh, an amendment, yes. All right. I'd like to amend my motion to give the administration time to come forward with a plan to reopen Birthborough Elementary School. Um, and I would like to, you know, it's something we don't have to move on in December, but I'd like to at least start the process and see where the process takes us. Ms. Albright, did you second the original motion? Yes, sure did. Do you accept that? We, we sure, it sounds like the first one, but sure. Well, well he yeah. made the first one very simple upon to just a motion to open. This is really to directing the administration to plan for the reopening and present that to the board? No, it was to build a plan. We need to vote on whether or not we're going to have the plan. Correct. Correct? Correct. Right. Like, meaning we got to vote as a board to say whether or not we want the administration to move forward right. with a plan. That's correct. correct. We're not voting on whether or not we're closing or opening or anything. We're voting on whether or not the administration right. will create right. a plan. Is that correct? That's perfect. Okay. Right. Second. And so that is amended by friendly amendment. All right. So we have uh, an amendment on the floor, which has been seconded. Mr. Ocas and Neil, roll call vote, please. This is for the amended motion. For the amended motion. Right. Ms. Albright. Tell me what we're voting You're on. You're voting Second. on the amended motion, which is the motion to yes. develop so yes. a plan. Yes. Mr. Durso. Yes. Is everybody clear what we're voting on? It's okay if you're not. Let's be no, clear. I, I, I'm, I'm not 100% clear. All right. But, but I, I guess what I'm asking, I don't think it's, and I hope I'm not being inappropriate here by talking, but I don't think it's crazy. I don't think we're, we need to direct him to do it. It's like, but could we at least, we need to, is that how it works? It, you you we, can't, we're, we're, he can't even just look into it or can. Well, it's a little bit more than just looking well, into I, it. It's okay, a problem. He's, he's, he's certainly looking into, based on the current, Based on the current board directives, I mean the past board, right? He has no reason to invest any of his resources into looking into this. So unless he gets a directive from us specifically to look into it, he the should not. The plan do is to undo what we've already instructed right. him to do. And that so, so we have to have he would have, have no reason to look into this if we if, the, if this board does not direct him to do so. And this vote is just to simply say, do we, should we, we look into yes it or, or no that we want to put his team in action to create a plan? as to what the impact would be if we were to open Birdsboro Elementary as an elementary school and doing a boot school district again. Am I allowed to ask just a you can talk question to me. to you? You can talk to me if you like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, no, but, but I was here for the last board meeting, and, and the, the discussion came up about the scores and, and that our scores are going down a bit lower, and I'm, hoping I'm not saying it wrong. There's definitely a learning curve for me here. But... It seems to me that we're, we're jamming a lot of kids into school. And I'm not saying that, it's, that you know, I'm not 100% on the Birdsboro side, but I'm like, it seems like we're putting a lot of kids into these schools, and it's showing by the stats that, it, do you feel that, that it has anything to do with our scores that, that we're currently? We can speak offline. Okay. Uh, some of these conversations are executive. Well, okay, well, that's fair enough. We, we could have. Okay. But, um, yes, we, we can speak. That's fine. I, I don't know if I say something wrong. No, you're, you're okay. All right. So are we are we okay now on exactly what we're voting? On? Okay. It's good to be clear. Yeah, it's absolutely. Fine. So you're good with your vote, Mrs. Albert? Yes. Okay. Mr. Oaks O'Neill, no. Mr. J. Scott, no. Mr. Rathbam, yes. Mr. B. Scott. Yes. Ms. Olson. Yes. Mr. Wolf. No. Motion passes five three. I figure we should at least get the get this moving so we can get it out of the way. So whether we vote yay or nay, but at least get get a plan going and get it done. So. Thank you. Uh, any other new business from uh, the board? So uh, for our new members, we are, uh, I think you're aware, we're having an orientation in uh, 
superintendent's office after this. He's providing a uh, full course. Uh, no snacks. No, no, I'm sorry. No, no snacks. Sorry. <laughs> public to public. Uh, any, any public comments at all? Any, anything? Um, Mr. Subras, I think this question might be for you. Um, is there a reason why student achievement and current scores and um, current classroom conditions is um, a topic for executive session and not public? That's not, it is not a, an executive session topic, but it, uh, it can be discussed. Probably. Depends on what the reason is. Yes. Isn't it? Uh, it's informational. Well, I mean, Some again, of it's personnel. If it's related, it would have to be related to a specific personnel in order for it to be an executive session um, topic. Generally speaking, I would say it would not be, but I, there's nothing to prevent the superintendent from having a conversation with an individual board member about any topic. Mr. Martino, you promised a uh, comment every meeting, so I'm counting on that. Rich Montana, 25 West Falls Drive. That was so. Just two quick things. One, on the thing Mr. B. Scott said about gen the kids and the classes. Uh, it's important to, to note that no class exceeds our, our limits. And in fact, the class sizes this year are smaller than they have been in the past. The other thing I'd like to say is when you do this plan, you were mandated to do, Mr. Harris, aside from the fund, funding, which we'll discuss at future meetings, I'm sure, I'd like you to include the disruption to the children have already been moved from one school to the next in accordance with the one boom plan. I have a granddaughter who lives in Birdsburg, who's now in ABC, and now to move her back to another school. I just think you're disrupting the kids much more than necessary, and I think the whole one boom plan uh, is beneficial to the students' academic achievement, and that's not what hurt the scores this year. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Martinez. Any other public comment? If not, we'll take a motion to adjourn, please. So moved. Second.